Good day to you. Good to be here. I know a lot of people celebrating uh, Easter at this time and thanking God for a lot of things. We should always do that. This morning I'd like to talk to you about, I believe, the two greatest gifts that God has given to mankind. A lot of times we don't think of that. We don't think of the two, and I believe there are two. First of all, I would like to say that one that we forget is that God has given us life. And I mean us, mankind. God gave us. He, he created the world. He created the heavens. He created the animals. And then he made man. I love that. And he gave us a gift of creating us, but not just creating us, but making us like him. If you would look with me, we look at Genesis there 1 and 26 and 27, where God said, it says, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Here he made God in his likeness. Now I do know it says our likeness. We see later in John chapter 1 that one of those that was with him was, of course, was God's Son. Jesus was with God in the very beginning. We look at the story of creation and it says his spirit moved upon the face of the deep. So we know that the spirit of God we call the, the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost in the old King James Version. We can see the Godhead was there, the, the, the Spirit of God, God's family, Godhead. Uh, I don't know how to describe it because it's a world that we haven't seen, but we will see someday if we listen to the gifts that he has given to us. He gave us the gift of of life. He created that man that we call Adam, that first man, and through that man, the rest of the human beings came about. Matter of fact, I think it's kind of, I thought of this uh, as I was studying this lesson. God created Adam, then saw that it was not good that he was alone. So he had a sleep fall upon him, and he took of his rib, and he from that man, he made woman. Isn't that something? From that man, he made woman. I think that is unique. That God gave something to man. But, but then, when Satan came in and tempted Eve and then Adam and Eve sinned and ate of the forbidden fruit, we can see what happened then. The promise in 3 and 15 of Genesis was made to woman that through her seed, through her seed, Satan would be destroyed and mankind would be saved. By what? By the seed of woman. And that was, of course, Christ. So God created man. Man from God through man's element created woman. And then through woman without man created came the Christ, the Son of God. Isn't that unique? And then through that Son came the salvation, the second gift, the gift that we have. The second part of the gift of life is eternal life. John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. We can see God loved us. He gave us life. He gave mankind. He gave mankind life. That is the greatest, the greatest gift that I believe that he ever gave to us. But then I, I'm going to tell you that the, the next great gift that he gave to us was death. Death. That's not a gift, that's a curse. No, I'm not talking about that death that we we take off because of the sin of, of, of Adam and Eve. I'm talking about that gift of the death of the Son of God. That's the gift. He gave us life and then he gave us death. We, we sinned and mankind all have sinned and came short of the glory of God. 
and that he knew that, but he still made us like unto himself. But we had a flaw. And that flaw, he corrected. You know how a, a, a painter or somebody can have something new. I know each one of you, you have some kind of hobby. If it's painting or it's a crafting or it's pottery, you have made something and there's been a flaw in it. And you have taken something and found some way that you can take it and take that flaw out of it, right? Didn't that happen to you? It happened. And God knew that the only way to take the flaw out of mankind was to give his only begotten son. I'd like for you to look with me at John. We're going to talk about this in John chapter, John chapter 10. John chapter 10, beginning in there in verse 17. Where Jesus explains to us what I'm talking about. Because here in 10 and 17 of the book of John, Jesus says, Therefore my Father loved me, because I laid down my life that what may, that I may take it again. What? I lay down my life so that I can take it again. He laid down his life. He says, no one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. And this commandment I have received from my Father. The commandment that he was going to lay down his life. He laid down his life. He died. He died. He gave his blood, his body on that cross. This is the old song. One of the favorite songs I love is, What can wash away my sins? And what is the answer? Nothing but what? The blood of Jesus. We can see that we have given to us. We have given to us the promise. We have given to us death that Jesus he, he died on that cross he went to that cross he died but then we know something else we know the story of Jesus oh some of you thinking about Easter we celebrate Easter I don't see it in the Bible I don't see Easter because sometimes we I don't know why it is. We celebrate two points of Christ's life more than the other. All of Christ's life. First of all, I know in, we talk about it going to the, the church so many times people like to go on what we call Christmas. I don't think the date's right on the calendar, but in a way, we, we, the world celebrates. They remember Christ's birth. Yes, it is true that his death started with his birth. In a way, it was a death because death means separation. And he left heaven and came to earth. He died as a God and became a man. A lot of people don't realize that. He died as a God when he became a man. And he was tempted like unto us. He lived. He, he gave his birth, but it didn't stop that God so loved us so much that he lived. He lived on this earth. He lived as a child. He lived as a young man. And then, according to the Jewish law, when he got to the age of 30, when he can become a priest of age, to be a, what we would call a, a grown person in the sense we still, I think, recognize that age today in, in, in America. To become a senator, I believe the age is still 30, to be a senator. You can't become a senator of the United States unless you're 30 years of age. We still go back to that time and the way that they looked at it way back then, that a man was had that age of responsibility at 30. Today, he lived. And we see that he lived those first 30 years and then he taught those three years. He taught with his disciples and, and taught and preached and told them what was going to happen. That's what we read in, in Romans, 
in John 10, that's what we read, him talking to his disciples and telling them what was going to happen. And then, of course, we know that he died. He died on that cross. He died on that cross and he had to die alone. All his, his mother, his family, and his one disciple was there. The other had left him. And even his heavenly father, even God, had to turn his back to allow his son to die. I think the hardest and the most loving words that shows how much God loves us is when we hear Jesus and his words. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And I know why, and you do too. Jesus knew why, but he was suffering at time. We just read it. He laid down his life for us. So he died. And then, of course, we know. We know that he rose. We, we know he rose. We call it now Easter, but it's the day of resurrection. He, he arose upon that first day of the week. He, he arose. But the thing about this, not only did he arose, he, he prayed for a few weeks among us before before his disciples, even in front of thousands at a time. He, 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 he saw, they saw him, different ones. But then, I think the great thing is, the great thing is, we see he fulfilled what he said to John when he said, I go to prepare a place for you because we see what happened if we look at, at Acts. If we look at Acts and, and see what happened in Acts 1 and verse 9, if you would look with me. Acts 1 and verse 9. He spoke words to them to comfort them, but then after, after he spoke, it says that now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. What happened? He arose. He arose and went back to heaven to prepare a place for us. Oh, I want us to remember Christ's birth. I want to remember why he, he came. He came to show us that somebody could live righteously. But he came so that he could die, shed his blood for, for humanity. And I said humanity, not just for us. I said humanity. He shed his blood for all the way back to Adam and Eve and all the way to whatever this world is destroyed. He shed his blood for all of us, everybody, and every time. He shed that blood and then he arose. He arose and talked and made sure the people understood what he was, what he had done and what they needed to do. Look at the end of Matthew when he told the disciples to go into all the world and teach the gospel to every nation. He told them to do that. Recorded in Mark. He recorded there for them to go and to, to, to teach and, and baptize. Why? Because people needed that. And then after that, he ascended and went back home. A place that he had left. A place that he returned so that we would not be bound on this earth because this earth will be destroyed someday. But heaven is for us, and for us for eternity. And I pray with you. Remember the Lord this day. Remember the Lord in December. But you know, also remember the Lord upon the first day of the week. What is called in Revelation the Lord's Day. It's the Lord's day. We should remember him. Remember what 
was told by Paul that the Lord had told him in, in 1 Corinthians 11, 23. What he told them, he said, concerning the Lord's Supper, communion, that they was to take of the bread and they was to take of the fruit of the vine, representing, remembering, remembering his body and his blood that was shed for us. Oh, what we have. Mankind had life because God chose to create us in his likeness. Then he gave us death, the death of his son. But his son proved that death had something after it. And he rose. And then he has given us the promise of a place with him forever. God be with you. Till we meet again.